Hey everybody, we've been using a difference quotient formula to find the derivative throughout this unit of videos. And I wanted to let you know that there is more than one way to represent the difference quotient for finding a derivative. So the first one you should see here is involving f of x plus h minus f of x over h. That's the one we've been using. The second one does the same thing. Instead of letting x plus h approach x by letting it by letting h go to zero, instead we're defining x and z, and we're letting the points themselves approach each other. So rather than defining, defining the distance between the points as h, we're simply taking the points themselves, x and z, and letting them get closer and closer together. So what I want to do is I want to solve a problem using the alternate formula for derivatives to find the derivative of this function here. So we're going to use a second formula. So f prime of x. Still called the same thing, still does the same thing. <clears throat> it's just a little bit different in how it all works out. All right, so f of z. Well, let me write the formula first so you know which one I'm using. The f of z is the part that is much easier to do than in the previous version we talked about because all you have to do is take your function and plug in. Oh, I did my x and z backwards. Let me fix that. So all you have to do is plug z in for all the x's. All right, so f of z, that's the square root of 2z minus 1 minus the square root of 2x minus 1 all over z minus x. Okay, so all I did was take my function, plug in z to get f of z, and then take the original function f of x and plug that into my formula. On the bottom, z and x are still z and x because we're letting them approach each other once we take the limit. So... Can we go ahead and let z approach x? Well, that means we have to plug in x's everywhere there's a z. What happens if I replace this z with an x? Then these two square roots would cancel out and you get 0. If I replace this z with an x, I get x minus x, which is 0. 0 over 0 in determinate form, so that's not going to work. What are we going to do? Algebra. So in this problem, because we have the square root, do you remember which algebra trick we can use to try and simplify the problem if it involves roots? Hopefully you're thinking, hopefully you remember conjugates. If you want to pause the video and try it, because we've done this before, go ahead and try it. Come back and watch the video and see how I do it. So conjugate, remember, that means you keep everything the same except the sign between the terms. Inside of the roots stays the same because you want them to multiply together and the root cancel. Whatever you do to the top, do the same exact thing to the bottom. You're thinking, man, we're making a mess of the bottom. Yeah, there's no guarantee this is going to work, really, technically. However, many, many, many times this is going to work because one of our issues is that we have zero on top and bottom. Hopefully, this is going to allow us to simplify, get rid of some of the square roots on top, and the square root on the bottom, notice it's addition now, so that addition is not going to turn into a zero most of the time. All right, let's keep going here. Limit, don't forget your limit notation, z approaches x, and then we'll multiply the conjugates. Remember, when you multiply conjugates, when you FOIL them, do you need to do the whole FOIL? No, the middle terms cancel out. So if we do first terms and multiply them together, square root times itself is 2z minus 1. Now the second terms, multiply them together. Well, it's going to be a negative, negative everything. So make sure you put parentheses around the second term. So square root times itself, square root is gone. So 2x minus 1, the inside is all that remains. Don't forget to subtract all of it. On the bottom, if you want to FOIL that, you have fun, but I don't think it's going to be helpful. If it's just going to make a bigger mess, then try leaving it in factored form unless you see that foiling it is going to do something good for you. In this case, if I foil this, I'm just going to get four square roots, and I don't want to go there. All right, let's see. We could take the limit. We could let z go to x, so replace all the z's with x's. But if we do that, I'm pretty sure we're still going to get 0 over 0. So let's keep going with the algebra. So 2z minus 1 minus 2x minus 1. So this negative needs to distribute, so this would become negative and positive. Well, that means the ones are going to cancel. So let's write what's left. Limit, as z approaches x, we have 2z 
minus 2x on top over z minus x. Ooh, I see something useful there, maybe. We might do a little bit of work. 2z minus 1 plus the square root of 2x minus 1. All right, do you see what I see here? On top, we have a GCF. If I factor out the GCF of 2, what's left? z minus x. Cross this out because I rewrote it up top factored. Now I see what I needed. The square, or the parentheses are the same, so they cancel. And now that got rid of our 0 over 0 problem. Now we can take the limit. Let me rewrite it so we can see what we're doing. So we have on top just a 2. On the bottom, just the conjugate we created. Copy it over. And let's take the limit. So we have 2 over the square root. So z approaches x. So that means the z changes to x. So we have 2x minus 1 instead of 2z minus 1 plus the square root of 2x minus 1. It didn't go to 0 over 0. Great. The square roots, how do we add them? You add the numbers in front. So 1 plus 1 makes 2. So 2 over 2 square root of 2x minus 1. The twos cancel out. What's left on top, though, if you cancel everything? You need a placeholder of 1. So 1 over the square root of 2x minus 1. What is this? This is the derivative of f of x. If you want to use the other limit process, the other limit definition formula, go for it. You should get the same answer. If you don't, we did something, you did something wrong. <laughs> Make sure you practice these. These are very important. You can see that there's a lot of algebra that you need to remember in order to work these out. Practice, practice, practice. All right, that's it. Good luck. Study hard. I'll see you in the next video.